Hello friends, welcome to Akul Mac Live and I'm your friend Chandrakant. The Russian forces are almost 100 times the size of Ukrainian forces and we all expected this war not to continue for more than a week at the most. We felt that the war will be over in two to three days, you know, majority of it. And uh, after that, uh, Ukraine will have to surrender, etc. However, this war has continued for over two weeks now. How a small country like Ukraine is not only able to defend their land, but also giving a bloody nose to the Russian army. Let us find out. The war between Russia and Ukraine is uh, a not a simple war and uh, you know it is almost like uh, David and Goliath because if you look at any department of the invasion uh, the Russians have more aeroplanes, more tanks, more soldiers, more tech, more uh, drones, uh, more satellites and of course more weapons. So how come this is happening why the russians are not able to end the war quickly such a eventuality happens when the warring factions engage into asymmetric war i will explain to you what is asymmetric about basically uh, the asymmetric war is when one of the warring faction changes the rule of engagement and they move away from a conventional warfare it has happened already many times in history let us take some past examples during the second world war when the germans invaded poland poland was a very powerful uh, country with a uh, lot of soldiers a lot of armament and uh, they were very well versed very highly trained people very highly trained army but when germans invaded them the uh, invasion was over in three days and German occupation ended after a week. So, uh, you know, why such a thing happened during this invasion? Because the Germans brought in an asymmetric war on Poland. Poland was highly prepared for this war, yet they lost it within a very, very short period of time, simply because Germans relied on their uh, Blitzkrieg which is uh, using tanks and armored vehicles and they penetrated the defense lines of Poland on the first day itself and Poland uh, did not have any answer to the Blitzkrieg strategy using armored vehicle because Poland were basically at that point in time trying to engage in a conventional warfare. In the recent time, the battle between Azerbaijan and Armenia also resulted in asymmetric war because both sides were pulled up and they were fighting for many years uh, until the time Azerbaijan deployed the drones and uh, with a very short period of time using drones without involving any soldiers on the ground they were able to eliminate a hundred thousand strong army of Armenia and the soldiers who were sitting on the ground did not know what happened you know because they were just holed up in their trenches and uh, all of a sudden they will have a, a bomb which is falling on their uh, stronghold positions. So this is a strategy used by Azerbaijan. Completely war was fought using drone. It was a game changer. It was asymmetric war. Well, asymmetric warfare gives victory to one of the parties. But the conventional generals don't like this asymmetric war because they are more geared up to face to face uh, confrontation they, they have the mechanized infantry they have artillery they have field officers they have air force etc and they they like to create a predictable scenario and they plan their war games based on these predictable scenario however the asymmetric war which is being fought right now in russia and ukraine is basically uh, ukraine being a smaller force is using the drones they have actually acquired initially about 12 drones from Turkey and they are using these drones very effectively. So you can imagine the situation of the Russian army where uh, behind enemy lines, they are not in the war zone. They are just preparing for an invasion and suddenly there'll be a bomb somewhere. So uh, the drones are uh, very, very difficult to detect. They can uh, come quietly. They can choose their target and uh, they can drop their bombs uh, on uh, unsuspected uh, uh, people who are just preparing and then killing a bunch of uh, Russian soldiers. This is very, very 
disturbing for the planners of the Russian invasion. And uh, these Turkish uh, uh, drones are very, very effective. We will discuss more about them. The drones which are developed by Turkey are very low cost, very small and uh, can fly up to 20 hours. You know, once uh, the fuel is loaded into the drone, they can just uh, hover around at a very, very slow speed. It is so slow and it does not make any noise. It's small. It does not come on the radar and therefore, uh, even though you use uh, defensive uh, measures to destroy these drones, the defensive cost will be extremely high. These drones are very, very low cost. And each of uh, these drones, which are called Bayraktar drones, developed by, completely developed by Turkey, and they also have uh, infrared uh, targeting system, which is also developed by Turkey internally. So this is a completely indigenous uh, development. And they have sold 12 of them initially to Ukraine. Each of these drones can carry four armaments and they can pick and choose each of these uh, uh, locations. So each drone, once it is airborne, it will keep flying for 20 hours and it can hit four targets before returning safely. Even if it is destroyed, the cost is not very high. Now, this has become a big pain for Russian conventional uh, army because the planners of, on the Russian side have not really have an answer for this threat which is uh, very effectively being used every day every day they are killing soldiers behind enemy lines and uh, there is no solution right now available uh, for the russians and even if uh, the ukrainian lose one or two drones the collateral damage is not much because what you do is just you just lose one drone and uh, the drone may cost uh, half a million dollar or a million dollar or even if it is 1.5 million dollar there is no collateral damage because the pilot can then drive the other one because pilot is sitting uh, behind uh, uh, in, a, in a very uh, remote control room so ukraine don't lose any soldiers yet the russians will start losing a lot of their soldiers because of this uh, barrector drone to give you more information about the Barakter uh, drone, the Barakter uh, is a name of this gentleman who started the development of drone technology about 22 years back, completely funded by the Turkish government. And uh, he was a scientist and he was successfully able to create uh, the drone uh, using the targeting system from Canada and using some other engines which they imported from uh, other European countries. Later on, they replaced the targeting system of their own and also engine technology of their own. During past couple of years, a lot of changes have been done by Turkish government. The Barakter has been made into an enterprise and uh, the entity is now called Barakter Technology. It is headed by two sons of the original Barakter. And one of the sons is the son-in-law of uh, President Erdogan. Both of them you see in this picture. So you can imagine that there is so much force being put, Turkish force being put behind export of these uh, uh, drones to people all across the world. And uh, it is bringing a lot of foreign exchange for uh, the Turkish uh, government also. We in India must also be very careful because these drones are being supplied to Pakistan as well. So our planners, our uh, army generals, must be keeping this potent force in account while planning their war games. These drones are changing the face of the war. It's not only Turkish drone. The Israel have also developed their drone plan. They have uh, drones uh, which they deploy in the battle. The US has uh, very popular uh, drones which uh, are being used. They are called Predator. Even India was thinking about buying these drones. Uh, however, uh, the drone technology has evolved and they are now very low cost, just like this drone, Barakter drone from uh, Turkey. The advantage of using drone in the battlefield is that the drones may cost one or two million dollars. Now, if you compare that cost with a jet in, uh, aircraft, then the cost is probably 100 times of that. And then uh, it requires a lot of fuel, it requires uh, trained pilot, it requires a lot of paraphernalia. Uh, uh, to uh, you know take to the battlefield so if you lose an aircraft you will actually end up losing 100 to 150 million dollars whereas if you lose a, a, a drone 
then you will end up losing only half a million dollars to maximum ma uh, about 1.5 million dollars. So there is a huge difference in the cost. At the same time, you don't lose your trained pilot because the pilot is sitting on the ground and is far away from the battlefield. Even countries like Iran have been able to develop successfully their drones. Their drone, as it is shown in this picture, is uh, something which is uh, having a range of uh, almost 2000 kilometers. And in 2021, the Israeli radar system actually gave an alert that this drone uh, was uh, approaching the Israeli territory. The jets were scrambled and these drones were brought down. Israel had to scramble their top of the line jet, which is F-35. Now, people, you know that uh, F-35 is the most advanced, most expensive jet uh, which is uh, available today for the good money. So Israel had to uh, scramble these jets and then uh, they tracked uh, these drones because the F-35 has a very state-of-the-art uh, radar system. They were able to track them and Israeli government then uh, released a statement that these drones were being used to drop supplies to the Hamas and uh, they were able to intercept and destroy that. Now imagine that, you know, the cost benefit also. The Israelis have to have this uh, war system, very expensive war system to destroy something which cost a piddly amount, you know, and to trace them, they have to have some sort of a, uh, a very expensive radar system to track these small drones which fly very slowly. So you can imagine that the cost benefit analysis and because of the use of drone, the war conditions or uh, in any condition like in, in the case of Israel also the asymmetry is created between uh, the two factions. So going back to the subject of why Russians are taking so long to defeat the Ukrainian army is because of this asymmetric warfare that they are fighting. The Russian generals are more fine-tuned to uh, have a face-to-face -face battle but the asymmetry has been created by Ukraine they are bringing the elements uh, which are beyond the control of uh, Russian army. They are bringing these drones. In fact, these drones are so effective. Initially, they bought 12. Now we hear that the Ukrainians have uh, placed a new order for an undis undisclosed uh, number of drones from uh, Turkey. So there will be more and more of these drones flying over the Russian army and they will be uh, taking these uh, targets uh, uh, without uh, much of collateral damage on the Ukrainian side. So a, a big uh, lesson that we have to learn here is that the war is not uh, uh, being fought conventionally face to face in a war zone. And uh, because of that, to counter this threat, now the Russians have resumed the rockets and cruise missiles because they don't want the soldiers to die. So they have now started bombarding from a distance. And that is why they are not entering the cities of Ukraine although they have been uh, able to surround all the major cities but they are not entering because they don't want their soldiers to die uh, either in a uh, urban environment or um, urban warfare uh, uh, taking street by street because that is not their intentions are at the same time they don't want to have a collateral damage the soldiers losing their life even without fighting without even firing a bullet because the drone will come over their head undetected and drop a bomb on them so they have started uh, uh, using the rockets and cruise missiles and they are now every day firing different installations in Ukraine using these rockets. Friends, do let me know what you think about my uh, analysis. Do you agree with these points? Uh, do you agree that uh, Russia is facing a tough time because of the asymmetric war they are fighting in Ukraine? And now we hear that the, uh, the soldiers are also being uh, hired as mercenaries from uh, on so many countries. Uh, today morning I heard that there are soldiers available in Ukraine to fight Russia from 52 countries and uh, the news is that each of these uh, soldiers may cost to the extent of $2,000 to $3,000 per day. So now the asymmetric war is really gaining momentum. They are using drone and they are now getting mercenaries to fight the Russians. Do let me know what you think about this. Right with your comments and uh, for today i like to say goodbye only to catch you again in the next one